Welcome back to Madman Review. If you're too busy tinkering with your guns, you probably haven't noticed how some of Hollywood's biggest names can be hypocrites. These are A-listers who stand on the grand stage of public opinion, passionately voicing their support for strict gun control measures, all while their profession and personal lives tell a story that's not quite in line with their public declarations. Not intrigued? Well, you should be. Hollywood has long been a land of glittering stars and blockbuster hits, but beneath its glossy surface lies something dark and evil. While many of its luminaries have built careers wielding guns on the big screen, off-screen, they vocally oppose the very rights that allow us, ordinary Americans, to own firearms. This video delves deep into the heart of Hollywood hypocrisy highlighting the stars who've made their mark in action-packed, gun-filled movies only to turn around and campaign against the Second Amendment rights of their fans. These stars preach the importance of gun control all while they're comfortably nestled behind the gates of their fortified mansions, with not just a locked door, but a team of guards armed with nothing else but, yeah, you guessed it, guns. Guns for me, not for thee. So we're going to expose these contradictions one by one. We'll look at what these stars say, what they actually do, and why their stance might just be a performance worthy of an Oscar. So buckle up and get ready to shake your head a few times. Number one, George Clooney. Let's talk about George Clooney and the utter hypocrisy that seems to be the Hollywood norm these days. First off, Clooney's out there acting like he's the poster child for gun control, donating half a mil to gun control rallies like he's some kind of saint. Yeah, you heard that right. The same guy who's made a literal fortune playing gun-toting heroes in countless movies is now Mr. Anti-Gun. Talk about a plot twist no one asked for. And then there's Clooney on the record saying he's scared of guns despite having grown up around them in Kentucky and having them in a lot of his films. I mean, come on, really? You're scared of something that's essentially been your co-star in your blockbuster films? Oh, and he made a laughable attempt at virtue signaling following the tragic Rust shooting incident. Clooney goes on about gun safety practices on set as if he's suddenly the authority on the matter. Sure, safety is crucial, but coming from a Hollywood elite who's built his career on glorifying gun violence, it just doesn't sit right. The hypocrisy is just too much. The guy's happy to profit off movies that romanticize gun battles and action sequences, but when it comes to real-life rights and protection, suddenly they're on the moral high ground? Please. Number 2. Sean Penn Let's get this straight about Sean Penn, the guy who once owned a mind-boggling arsenal of 65, or by some accounts, 67 firearms. He's one of those Hollywood elites preaching gun control. Yeah, the same Sean Penn who's been all over the news for saying that the gun control advocating students from Parkland give him hope. The irony? It's as thick as the plot of one of his slow-burn thrillers. So, Penn, under the influence of Charlize Theron, his then-girlfriend, decided to say goodbye to his collection of cowardly instruments of violence and destruction. His solution? Hand them over to none other than Jeff Koons to turn them into a sculpture. Because nothing says, I'm done with guns, like turning them into a multi-million dollar art piece that fetched $1.4 million at the auction. All in the name of charity. And there you have it, a perfect portrait of Hollywood hypocrisy. On one hand, we have Penn, making a grand gesture of getting rid of his guns, yet on the other, he's made a pretty penny from roles where he's doing just the opposite on screen. Number 3. Robert De Niro So, you know how Robert De Niro wants to lecture us on gun control, right? He was out there clapping along with the Parkland students, acting like he was the guardian of the moral high ground. 
Newsflash, it's hard to take gun control lectures seriously from someone who not only glamorizes gun violence on screen, but also ensures he can personally carry a gun whenever he pleases. This is the same De Niro who strutted around with a gun in countless films, making millions of portraying characters that live by the gun. Yet he stands on a pedestal preaching to the everyday American about gun violence. The irony's thicker than fog in a noir film. But wait, yeah, it gets better. De Niro's got a concealed carry permit in New York City of all places, a privilege rarer than a truthful politician. Most law-abiding citizens couldn't get one if their life depended on it, but hey, De Niro's special, right? Hollywood's hypocrisy knows no bounds. Guy cashes in on films packed with gun violence and then turns around to wag his finger at the average Joe like you and me just because we can't pay for the same bodyguards they have following their every move 24-7. Number 4. Jamie Foxx Let's talk about Jamie Foxx and his grandstanding on gun control, shall we? Here's a guy who, from the glitzy podiums of charity events and public programs, preaches about gun violence and advocates for gun control. There he is, calling for cooler heads and vaguely yearning for bipartisan efforts to curb gun incidences. Without offering a sliver of practical solution, he's part of the annual gun buyback program in San Francisco, standing shoulder to shoulder with anti-gun advocates, nodding along to the tune of disarmament. But let's peel back the curtain a bit, shall we? Because while Fox and his ilk are on their public platforms waxing poetic about the evils of gun ownership, they're safe in layers of security. And guess what? Those security teams aren't throwing harsh language and stern looks at would-be threats. Uh, No, sir, they're packing the very firearms Fox publicly condemns. The hypocrisy is so thick you could cut it with a knife. But why bother with a knife when there are armed guards to do the heavy lifting, right? These Hollywood types with their armed entourages are living in a bubble. They preach gun control from a place of privileged safety paid for by the very means they claim to despise. Meanwhile, the average Joe and Jane are expected to nod along, meekly surrendering their rights and means of protection because Mr. Fox feels it's the enlightened way to go. The audacity to stand in the limelight and demand restrictions that they themselves will never feel the consequences of is not just hypocrisy, it's an affront to every principle this country stands for. While they sleep soundly, guarded by gun-toting security, the rest of us are left to wonder about our safety and our rights. So, thanks, but no thanks, Jamie. We'll keep our guns and our dignity. You can keep the hypocrisy. Number 5. Arnold Schwarzenegger Ah, Arnie, the man who flexed his way into our hearts as the Terminator. This guy fancies himself a gun control advocate. But let's dissect his hypocrisy like a surgeon with a scalpel. You can probably picture good old Arnie, clad in leather, mowing down bad guys with an arsenal of firearms in the Terminator series. He's the badass who defends with guns and the badass who kills with guns. Yet when the cameras stop rolling, he morphs into a peace-loving politician who wants to disarm the very citizens he once portrayed on screen. In August 2003, Schwarzenegger claimed to be a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, but earlier that same month, he cozied up to the Brady Bill, championed an assault weapon ban, and advocated for mandatory safety locks, all while running for governor of California and as a Republican at that. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, violent movies and real-life massacres. Arnie, in one of his interviews after starring in The Last Stand, insists we should keep the two separate. Entertainment, he says, is one thing, tragedy is another. But he's the guy who wielded guns on screen, raking in millions while simultaneously wagging his finger at legal gun owners. It's like a chef condemning gluttony while secretly gorging on cake. So Arnold, spare us the theatrics. You can't play hero and villain, then preach about gun control from your Hollywood pulpit. It's time to pick a lane. Action star 
or political pundit. Number 6. Mark Wahlberg This guy has a peculiar relationship with firearms. His statements about guns reveal a hypocrisy that's hard to ignore. In 2007, Wahlberg lamented to the Herald Sun in Australia, saying, I would love it if they could take all the guns away. Unfortunately, you can't do that. So, you hope that good people in the world have them to protect those who can't defend themselves. Admirable sentiment, right? But wait for it. He then adds, certainly I haven't used a gun anywhere other than on a movie set, and I'd like to see if we could take them all away. It would be a beautiful thing. Now let's dissect these comments. The first part seems pro-gun, hoping for a utopian world without firearms. But the second part? It's a murky blend of idealism and BS. Wahlberg acknowledges that guns won't vanish, so he hopes good folks wield them. Fair enough. But it's a squint-worthy stance. Here's where the hypocrisy kicks in. Wahlberg, the man who pontificates about gun control because, to him, guns are only for criminals, is no stranger to the criminal justice system. He's a felon, and not just a felon, but a violent one. A few years back, he sought a pardon for his crimes, but it was a no-go. Maybe he wishes for a gun-free world because he knows that if his victim had been armed, he might not have lived to star in Mile 22 or Lone Survivor. So Mark, while you sip your latte in your Hollywood mansion, remember this. Your anti-gun rhetoric doesn't hold water when your past screams trigger happy. You're a walking contradiction, my friend. And as for taking all the guns away, well... That's a beautiful fantasy, but reality bites harder than any action movie scene.